Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. We're gonna be talking about hard light versus soft light. What creates it, how to use it, creatively, technically. Let's get into it. So we're gonna start off with a little science, a little explaining of hard light versus soft light how to create it and how it works. So it's really simple. Uh, the smaller, smaller the light source in relation to your subject, which I will explain a little bit more in a minute, but the smaller the light source in relation to your subject, the harder the light. The larger the light source in relation to your subject, the softer the light. So now let's explain that. Uh, let's use the sun, for example. Uh, it's a really simple example that everybody can understand. The sun is actually a massive light source, right? It's tremendous, but it's so far away Again, in relation to your subject, that's what we're talking about. So it's a huge light source, but it's very small in relation to the subject. If I'm shooting a person or I'm shooting this scene outside, the sun might be a huge light source, but in relation to the subject, because it's so far away, it creates a very, very hard light. Because what's happening is all the light is coming from a single angle, right? You don't have light coming from there and light coming from there with the sun. It's only coming from the angle that the sun is at. So we're gonna start with just a single hard light source, just one strobe, that's gonna mimic the sun. So it's gonna mimic more like the end of the day because I'm gonna have it at a little bit of a lower angle. Think of the, this angle in the sun. If it was like two o'clock in the afternoon, I would put my light straight up coming down. But we're gonna do like a little later in the day coming across. So let's take that shot. So now you see the light scraping straight across the image. All right, so we're gonna start with this really huge softbox. This is, what's the exact dimension? This is a 31 by 47. It's by Glow, it's Adorama's brand. When you buy them, make sure you get the easy lock. The quick lock, uh, what does he call it? Easy lock, yeah. Because this opens and closes like an umbrella instead of having to build it like you build a tent every single time, it's a pain in the neck. It's gonna come from about the same angle, but much softer light. Cause now, instead of just one pinpoint of light, we have this huge light source. It's gonna be coming from all these different angles. Let's take that shot. I'm gonna turn the power up again, cause that diffusion material eats up some of my juice. There we go, nice, soft, beautiful shadows. One thing was important we said was uh, in relation to your subject. So I can make this big softbox even harder or even softer. So if we bring it really close to our subject, it's gonna get even softer. So let's try that. So now it's gonna be right up tight. I'm gonna to have to turn the power down. So now if you look at the difference between these two shots, the light got even smoother. And again, which one's better, which one's worse, we're not discussing that, it's not important. This is just how to do it. Which one do I like better? I like that hard light that we started with, with that dramatic shadow scraping across. That to me, that's my style. I always like drama, I like to tell a whole story. This is, although maybe it makes more sense, there's kind of like a softness going on and this is like a softer scene. Uh, but to me, as a straight up image, I like the one with the dramatic shadows better. All right, now let's take this hard, this soft light source and move it really far away and we're gonna get a hard light source out of it. Won't be as hard as the bare strobe, but it'll definitely be more defined shadows. Okay, so we moved it further away. So we're gonna have to raise the power. And there you go. So now we have kind of soft light, but it has a little more definition in the shadows. Let me compare that to the shot previous. This was when the soft, soft box was right up on top of the subject. And this is where we're at now. So still soft light, but slightly more defined. I'm not gonna show you because I think you get the idea, but if I was able to take this light and put it like another 10, 15 feet back and also a little higher up, I could, we're just not gonna do it now. You'd get even more defined, stronger shadows because again, it's the light source in relation to the subject, not how big the light source is, but the softbox, the light source in relation to your subject. Again, I keep on saying that because it's really important. The softbox size is not as important as how close it is to your set. Yep. 
All right, I hope you learned a little something today about hard light versus soft light. A little again, I love the technical and the creative. Uh, cheers to that. Mm. And uh, yeah, food styling tip, it's apple juice, not wine. Thank you.